So, what if this is true? The risen Christ is actually present in the elements of bread and wine. We sometimes speak of searching for God, wishing we could have met Jesus, saying that we could believe if only Christ would appear to us, and here he is. Not only is Christ present at the altar, but he also gives himself to us. As we eat the bread, we are receiving in an intimate and personal way his body that was broken on the cross. Oh my goodness. When we sip the wine, we are receiving his blood that sealed the covenant, assuring the forgiveness of sin. We are literally united with Christ. Christ crucified, resurrected, and ascended, bridging the gap between here and Golgotha, now and eternity. Oh my goodness. Woo. Man, we are literally united to Christ. When scripture says that we are united to Christ, that's not just a metaphor. That's not just an ancient way of saying God going to hold you down. No, that is a literal statement. How we receive Christ himself in bread and wine, his physical body, his physical blood in some sacramental union, some mystical union is what we receive during that time. My goodness. Beautiful. He says, Christ crucified, resurrected, and ascended, bridging the gap between here, where we are right now, and Golgotha, now and eternity, coming together at the Lord's Supper. Ooh, oh my goodness. It has been said that this contact with Christ is more direct and closer and more intimate than what his disciples enjoy. Wow. Again, Christ comes to us. It is not something we do, but something Christ does, which we have only to receive. The Lord's Supper is nothing less than the gospel, perhaps the most significant of God's words that constitute the sacrament. Luther points out are given for you. Keep that in mind. The one who receives the bread and wine hears that Christ's body and blood here offered are for you there is nothing vague here there is no need to worry about my decisions or whether i have been elected to be saved that hits home for me because i came from the reformed baptist camp where it was taught that jesus only died for the elect and if you were doing good you didn't really trip off of it but if you were doing bad that was a scary thing to ponder to wonder am i one of the elect but the reality is Jesus died for everyone so I can find assurance in that reality, number one. And then number two, I'm relieved that I don't have to wonder if Jesus is present for me in a bread and a wine. I can know for certain that he is or whether I am sinful. In the sacrament, Christ gives himself to me all of his promises and everything that he did for my redemption and forgiveness on the cross or made so tangible that I can taste them. I am touching, in fact, the risen Christ as the first disciples did. Woo! Selah! Selah! And God's word ringing in my ears as I take this nourishment tells me that his body and blood are for me. So you listening for you beautiful that means that my sins are actually forgiven that i can be assured of god's favor yeah what up though listen we stopped the video to let you know we moving over to extra notes academy so if you want to see the rest of this podcast type in extra notes academy in your youtube search box and you're gonna see the rest of this content tap in